Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Jake from today's iPhone.com and I'm back with iOS 7 for another preview of the software. Uh, today we're going to be going over a bunch of the features that Apple didn't publicize at its keynote, uh, stuff that either have come out online or that we've noticed ourselves here at today's iPhone.com, uh, the little things that are definitely going to make the software amazing. Uh, so the first one I can show you right from the lock screen. If I go into Notification Center, you see I have a notification from the App Store. If we zoom in a little bit, um, there we go, you can see dots and I'd cap that were updated. Now the, up, the notifications for updates is totally new and it's part of the background automatic updating. So I didn't actually click update on either of those apps. Uh, iOS 7 saw that they needed to be updated, took care of it itself, and let me know when it was done. Now there are a couple cool things about the home screen. If we go over to the second page, I go into my blurg folder. Now this is a folder I just put things in that I don't really want, but have to have. Um, and if I scroll over, you can see that newsstand is in the folder. Newsstand isn't its own separate folder anymore, which means you can finally put it into a folder. Now another cool feature in the blurg folder is if we go into the compass application, the compass is totally redesigned and it looks great. But if we scroll over, we have a new feature. It's a level right in the compass application. Uh, it looks kind of strange right now. Uh, this, this, you can either have it show you what's flat. Let's see if we can get it. Or what is, there we go, what's level. Uh, also from the home screen, you may have noticed that there is no longer a spotlight search if you scroll past the first screen on your home screen. Um, I was a little worried about that at first just because I really use the search a lot to find things like contacts or applications that are in folders. Well, it turns out that Apple didn't actually get rid of spotlight search, they just changed it around a bit. So instead of scrolling over, all you have to do is from any page on the home screen, swipe down, and it opens spotlight search. Okay, moving on, if we go into the phone application, you'll notice that in my favorites, there now are pictures of next to all of my favorites of uh, the contact pictures that I set. This is a new feature and it's really cool and I wish Apple would bring this circular contact feature to messages or iMessage or the contacts application. Uh, so far it's only in the favorites, but I think it looks great. Also in the phone application, if we click on the buttons on the dialer, you might be able to see that there are stars shining through. My wallpaper is a starry background and when you tap on a button, it shines through. So that's just a cool little UI thing. And now there are a couple of new options and settings that I want to show you guys. So let's go into the settings application. First of all, control center now has its own tab. So far the only thing on it is uh, whether it's available on the lock screen or not, but hopefully new stuff comes to that shortly, like uh, being able to choose the applications that are down here at the bottom or choose the widgets or something like that. Uh, moving on, if we go into general and then accessibility, there are a couple new audio options, including advanced support for hearing aids, a mono audio, and then you can even reduce the motion on the background, so this parallax effect that we get when we move our phone around, like with the wallpaper, uh, you can actually reduce that. Now backing out of accessibility, if we scroll down to the social networks that are supported, Flickr and Vimeo both make an appearance along with Twitter and Facebook. It was rumored that Apple was working with Flickr and Vimeo to integrate them into iOS, and it is true. Unfortunately, I don't have accounts for either of these, so I can't show you exactly what's new, but it works just the same way that Twitter and Facebook do. Okay, moving on, one of the new features that Apple announced in the music application was that it now shows everything that you have, whether it's on your device or in the cloud. Um, this could be good for some people, but personally, I was very, very uh, disappointed in this feature. I have a lot of stuff in the cloud that I've purchased that I just don't want. I don't want to see it there. I don't want it on my phone or my iPad or anything. So I was pretty bummed when Apple said it was going to be there, but um, if you're like me and you don't want that there, don't worry because you can actually turn it off in the music. You can see this show all music thing. I have it as off, so only music that has been downloaded to this device will be shown. Uh, if I turn that on, then everything I've purchased that's up in the cloud that isn't actually on my device is also shown in my iTunes, available for download. Um, you can do the same thing with videos, so that's definitely great news. And the last thing I want to show you this time is in the camera. So if we go into camera and we switch to video. And now this, I'm going to press record, so it's currently recording a video. And I can zoom in while recording. This was never a feature that Apple allows you to do before, but now you can. Okay, well that's all the features for iOS 7 that I can fit in this video. There are a few more that I didn't talk about. 
Uh, those will be listed in the post on today's iPhone.com, so definitely check that out. And keep in mind that this is the first beta of iOS 7, and we've only had it for a few days, so new awesome secret features are bound to come up in the months leading to the public release of iOS 7. So definitely stay tuned, and hopefully we'll have some cool new things for you next time. Thanks for watching, and if you have any comments or questions or anything you want me to explore further, definitely let me know in the comment section down below or on Twitter at TIP underscore Jake.